Hello, everyone. Uh, well, uh, I'm Thomas, and I'm working at GLOW, the social and uh, educational reading platform. And today I want to talk to you about uh, SwiftUI Dataflow and how we can make it work with, with Redux. So uh, what's the plan? Well, first, I'm going to introduce you to the SwiftUI Dataflow so we can start clean and everyone uh, on the same footing. Then I will introduce you to Redux. Uh, and, see, and then we'll see how we can make uh, work the SwiftUI Dataflow uh, that we saw with, uh, with Redux. So we can build the, archi the Redux architecture on top of it. And finally, we'll see some concrete example of uh, SwiftUI component uh, using Redux. So the SwiftUI data flow uh, is composed of a few property wrappers. Um, there is a state property wrapper, binding. There is one uh, protocol called OSABLE object, and then more property wrappers, uh, OSABLE object and environment object. Uh, we'll begin with the first one, uh, the state. Um, the state allows you to store a, persist, uh, a persistent wrapped value uh, tied to your view. So by design, uh, SwiftUI view are struct, so they are immutable. So if you want a value that is not lost when the view is uh, recreated and you can mutate, you need to use the state property worker. Uh, so it can mutate within uh, the view. And uh, as it's observed by the view, by the SwiftUI view, uh, whenever you will update state properties, the view will update uh, its content. So it will refresh the, the body of the view. Uh, so let's see uh, a code example here. We have our power view. We have uh, properties, immutable text wrapped into a state property wrapper and with the value hello world. Then in the body, we have a vstack, vstack with a text which display all the table text properties and a button. And whenever we we'll click the button, uh, it will actually update uh, the, the text to a new value to text updated. And because we update uh, this uh, property uh, or text, text, text uh, view, we'll update. It will reflect the, the latest change. And we can mutate it uh, because we use a state. We couldn't if we not, were well, not using uh, the state property wrapper. Uh, we can push it uh, one step further and use the binding property wrapper. So the binding property wrapper allows you to create a two-way connection to value managed by uh, something else. So it allows you to create a dependency between a parent view and a child view or between a container view and a contain view, for example. And whenever you update the state or uh, the bound value, it will update like to the root to the root of the state, so you can pass it to a few year if, if you want. And even if you update it to your tenth subviews, it will update back to the state and uh, reload all the views that that the binding uh, is passed to. So let's see a code. Uh, let's see a short code. Uh, as before, we have our parent view with your state, and we have a new child view which take uh, our uh, state as a binding. So now our child view, um, our child view will take this text and display it, and whenever we we'll click the button. Uh, it will update uh, our child view uh, text because we update the state. And we could even have the button in our child view and update the binding in our child view, and it will uh, update both uh, the binding and the updatable text uh, and the real text. Now we'll take a look at the protocol. Uh, it's a protocol you can implement on a class. It's called observable object. And uh, you need to make a class conform to this protocol. You, you can't use it on a script. Uh, typically, uh, you want to use this protocol on a view model. Uh, so uh, the view model will contain all the computed values uh, and computed values that you need uh, for your views, computed properties that you need for your views. And so this model will be observable, and your view will, need, will be able to uh, get the last uh, change in, uh, the last change in on the most computed value. Uh, let's take a look uh, at our uh, view model now. Um, so we have our my view model, which conform to observable object. And we implement one property my text, which uh, store hello world uh, string, and when and we implement the will set on it. And um, whenever uh, will set will be called, we call object will change that send, which we have access to uh, from the observable object protocol. And whenever we call the object 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 will change, it will notify all the subscriber. So in our case, with have views that there is some changing on that uh, the view can be uh, refreshed. Uh, so as before, we'll push it one step further and we'll take a look at the published property wrapper. Uh, so the published property wrapper uh, allow you to create a publisher that SwiftUI you can subscribe to. And you can also use published properties uh, for yourself and subscribe to uh, the property. For example, if you do uh, a search, you will maybe have a search, search text uh, string wrapped into a published property wrapper. And using your view model, you will subscribe to the search text. And because the search text property will be bound to some text field uh, in your SwiftUI view, whenever you will get um, whenever you will get new 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 input values, you will uh, using combine, for example, you will extract Part from your network API or from your database uh, and return results also to which property. So it can be used for Swift UI view itself automatically, and you can also use it for yourself and publish more properties uh, derived from uh, whenever this one change. 
And so this is a proper way to handle uh, live value within your view model. So now let's go back at the code of our view model. And this time, instead of calling uh, will set ourself, we uh, wrapped it into a publish property wrapper. And how to make SwiftUI uh, listen to or change? Well, for that, we use one more property wrapper called observed object. And this is a property wrapper that allows you to connect your view to your view model. So your view model that conforms to observable object will be able to be wrapped into observed object protocol. And so it allows you SwiftUI to subscribe uh, to your published property within this view model and subscribe to the change that you want to emit from this uh, view model. Or oh, I'm saying view model, but it can be any uh, observable object. Basically. So let's take a look now. Uh, we have our view model uh, on the my view, and my view uh, we create a new view model whenever this view is created, and we wrap it into observe object. And with the body, we reference my view model dot my text, and whenever we get my text uh, being from the body of this view or from anywhere in the app, um, or uh, text inside or my view will be updated to reflect uh, the new value of my text. Uh, let's take a look at the last one, environment object. So environment object allow you to retrieve an object injected into, into your whole view hierarchy uh, by the environment object view modifier. It's a cornerstone on, uh, on how, of how we'll make Redux works uh, with SwiftUI. So it can be useful, for example, if you want to inject a uh, database instance or network API service into your view hierarchy and access it uh, on some app preferences and access it from, your, from within your SwiftUI view. Let, let, let's see a concrete example. Uh, here is some code here. We did Define a class app preferences, which conform to the observable object protocol. We have three published property inside. Then we have the root view of our app. Uh, it uh, will instantiate app view and create an using environment object view modifier, instantiate a new uh, instance of app preferences and inject it into the app view. In app view, we can retrieve this instance using environment object property wrapper. Uh, and so now in the body, we can uh, actually bind uh, some toggle on our uh, Boolean values. And it's a two way connection. So whenever we'll change a, in our instance of our preferences in other view, for example, uh, the value of this Boolean or toggle will get updated. And whenever we will uh, update, uh, whenever we'll touch our toggle or toggle actually, uh, it will update uh, those Boolean values. So we can have shared preferences really easily into uh, and have access to it in any of the four view. Uh, and to reset all that, I made a very simple application called AC Helper. It's on uh, GitHub. It doesn't use Redux. It uses uh, everything we saw uh, right now. Uh, the, Swift, the simple Swift trade data flow, uh, property, property wrapper, on like something anything super complex. And uh, so, if you're fan of Swift UI on Animal Crossing, it's uh, it's a great uh, great way to get started uh, in Swift UI. And we have already uh, some around like 13 contributors uh, with a lot of pull requests. So anyone can join. Welcome. Uh, and now let's go uh, on topic and talk about Redux. So what is Redux? So Redux is a design pattern. Uh, it's a design pattern to help you uh, architecture your application data flow. The goal is to centralize your whole application state uh, into one uh, core store state and one like to have one business logic at, at one place uh, into your app. And if I'm talking about it today, it's because, uh, well, I love it. Uh, but why Redux? Why, uh, again, uh, the goal is to have a, a single source of truth. Uh, so you have all your business logic in one place. I'm really interested on that because uh, because this is the way it works, and this is like, like the goal is really to have all our, all our business logic, all our mutation happening in one place, and you will see uh, later why. Why? So because of that, we have an unidirectional data flow. So your view will emit action, uh, emit some action that will um, in the reducer emit some data and return a new state, and your view will get updated from this uh, new state. Uh, so all state modification happen in reducer. Uh, to be short, reducer are pure function. They take uh, as a current input the state on the action, and they return a new state that will be then assigned to your store. And it's really easy because of that to build like isolated and reusable view components. You don't need any parents. You don't need any child. You just need to to have access to the store to extract some properties and to build your view component, uh, your view just to view from that. Uh, let's take a look at the at the at the diagram. Our component in green. Uh, are the Swift UI view in our case. Uh, they will dispatch some action. An action is just a description of the change you want to make against uh, the current state. The reducer will take this action and the current state and compute a new state. And it will be assigned to the store. And finally, our component, our store will publish the, this new state to our subscribed uh, component, Swift UI view, and they will get updated. And we go on and on and on. So uh, how uh, we build, uh, how we will build a Redux store uh, using the SwiftUI data flow that we saw before? Well, we will have our store uh, that conforms to our object, and inside we will have one published properties uh, that contain our whole application state. And then we will create a new instance 
in the same delegate, for example, of our project or for store. And then we will inject our store as an envir using environment object uh, inside our home view or root view, hierarchy. So it will be available in any of our subsequent view, uh, in any of our subviews. And finally, uh, in any subviews, we can retrieve an instance of this store using environment object property wrapper. And uh, sorry, uh, and we can extract properties. So either we can extract them as committed properties using stored or state, as you see, or access it directly in the body. And because the store is published any 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 time a change happen, we will get the most updated uh, the most updated values. Um, but this is not really close to the React syntax we have today. It's working fine. Uh, it's not really close to the syntax, uh, the syntax we have today in React. For example, if you're doing somewhere application development, and it's not very pretty, and um, and and I wanted to make to make it closer to what we have uh, today in the in React uh, and Redux uh, architecture. So for that, I made an open source library called SwiftUI Flux. Uh, so the goal is to not access the store environment object uh, directly. The, the whole point is to uh, actually, in your view, you will have a new component called connected view. And the goal will be uh, in this connected view to extract uh, the properties you need, the circle properties you need from, the st from your store, from your state, and compute them into local view properties. So it's cleaner and much more closer to the uh, modern React uh, Redux syntax. So to illustrate that, I've made an app called uh, Movie Swift UI last summer. And this is where I started to explore uh, Redux with SwiftUI because I was working uh, in UIKit for years. So as SwiftUI went out, I wanted to see how I can make uh, an application using uh, using Redux with SwiftUI. So it's fully open source uh, and available on GitHub. Again, you can clone it, uh, you can launch it, and you can see how it works. There is a lot of animation, there is a lot of uh, actually views you can you can play with, and it's all working uh, using Redux. So how does it look? Know that we uh, have a SwiftUI Flux in our uh, as a dependency as a library. It's, it's a very small library, but it provides like few key components that make our, our life much easier. So now in our, our send delegate, in our own view, we are not injecting ourselves uh, the environment object store. We we wrapped our own view into a store provider. And store provider is just a fancy name uh, for something that's doing exactly the same as we did before. It's taking more content view and uh, using environment object uh, injecting the store. It's just providing some more synthetic sugar and it's providing like some more helper uh, if you if you use the library, you will see it wearing like some more some more tools. And then one of the other key components is connected view. So unlike SwiftUI uh, view, connected view uh, have a bit different life cycle. Uh, first, we will dispatch an action, a state modification. So it can happen wherever, like the user tap a button, whenever you trigger an API call, uh, or you have a response that will dispatch an action, uh, that will dispatch an action. Uh, then this view will receive a new state. Um, in the backend, basically, we are reducing, computing this new state in our reducer. And finally, uh, our view will receive this new state and call a function called map state to props. This is where we receive the current state and be able to extract uh, the states in local view properties. So here we do some more computation to extract this property. It should be very lightweight, so you're not, you don't want to slow down uh, switch trying rendering here. So all the heavy computation need to be done in your reducer. Uh, and then finally, it call a new function body uh, with your props. So it's not uh, a computed var anymore. It's a function. Uh, it's a function called body, where you will still return some view exactly as before, but you have access to your prop that you comfort, that you computed uh, above. And this is the only place where you have access to your props. And then basically, after that, we return our body. Uh, the view uh, is updated uh, and reflect or last test uh, information in your in your store. Let's take a look. At a very simple component. Here we are looking uh, at the context menu. Uh, add to fan club on remove from fan club, which is a toggle, a uh, context menu toggle on any uh, row that uh, have an actor on. In this app, we call it a people uh, model. So it's, this view needs need uh, conform to connected view, and it needs one second props. Uh, we use it to know if it's in the fan club or not. And for that, we use a custom binding. It will allow us to have a custom getter on setter and we'll uh, understand why just after. And the only thing we need from the parent is actually the people ID. So the ID uh, of uh, the actor uh, that we need to create the view. So then we'll call the function map state to props. This is where we receive the current state and where we need to compute our props. So we create a custom binding. And if you look at the getter, we just check if in our state the people is in the fan club or not. And this is in the setter that it's actually fun. We um, we dispatch uh, an action at to fan club or remove fan club depending if uh, the value uh, the boolean is in uh, I mean the actor is in the fan club or not. And then we return these props with our custom binding. So whenever we'll trigger this button, it will actually whenever we'll change this uh, binding wrap values, uh, it will actually trigger our action. 
So now let's take a look uh, at the body. Uh, so we have a VStack with a button. The button, uh, when it's tapped and in action, basically toggles the value. So pass the Boolean from true to false or false to true. And in, in the label, we have an hashtag with a text on an image. And we just um, display like the text on the image, like depending if it's uh, actually in the function lab or not. That's it. Uh, we just need this information on our view is fully aware of the state and we'll update accordingly on that it's like a few line of code and you're fully connected you and completely independent of uh, any fee, any other view or any anything else apart from of course obviously your, your state so how does it work how does it work in the back end like, let's take a deeper look we have a store as we said uh, that to create uh, when our application launch with our initial reducer on our initial app state or main app reducer or on our initial uh, application state our initial application state is very simple. It has a movie state on a people state. Let's take a look at the people state. The people state is composed of a map of people. So the ID is an int, and it goes to the final object people. And our fan club is just a set of this ID. We don't. We just need that uh, in our people state. Uh, the people action that we trigger when we click the button is add to fan club and remove fan club. And this action just have one uh, properties. Uh, a constant uh, uh, people with the idea of the people we want to add or remove. Then we have our dispatch function, which, as I said, like takes the current state and calls the reducer with the current state on the action and assign it to our state. And our main application reducer reduce have two reducers: the reducer for the movie and the reducer for the people. So. Then in our people reducer, we uh, actually uh, catch our two action, add to fan club on remove fan club, and we're just doing an insert of on or, or removing our set, and we return uh, the state. Let's take a look at one more component. Uh, I want to show you that even if we go through all this whole hoop, I, I hope you can see the video clearly on the stream, uh, I'm not sure. Uh, but I, I, I want to show you that even if you go through all the threads on this loop, SwiftUI still honor your animation. So here we have some button that triggers some state uh, modification. And whenever we click on it, the button will animate uh, their state ch change between the previous and new state. And so it works like natively as, as if you was using a, a, a state property wrapper or the binding property wrapper, for example, locally to your view. Um, and let's take a look at one more component, uh, a bit more complex this time. We are looking at, on the list. Uh, if you look closely at the video, you will see that whenever you click uh, on the context menu to add the movie to one of uh, your list, wish list, scene list, or any custom list, uh, we display a little icon uh, on the uh, top left of the, of the uh, poster. So we have our list image with three props uh, to know if it's in the wish list, if it's in the scene list, or if it is in the in a custom list. On the same as before, we just need one ID, the movie uh, ID that is relevant to this uh, context menu. Uh, to this view, actually. we understand the context menu this time. It's just a little, uh, it's just a little uh, icon, the, the, the view that controls the little icon. Then we have a map state to prop function that is called. We extract, uh, we extract from our state, like we query our state to know if uh, it's in the wish list, in the scene list, or in any custom list. And finally, we have our body here. So as you can see, I can pass the props to another function, no problem. So you can really make your code pretty to, to uh, cut it in like small function that you should do. And with these props, like we have, we're calculating like the, the icon, we're altering the icon we want to show, depending uh, of the uh, of the uh, depending of the list this movie is uh, in. Um, so to conclude, uh, Redux allows us to have like really easy separation of concern. Uh, it's for us with SwiftUI between the flow, basically. We are not making any fancy thing. Uh, we are making uh, we are just using uh, what we have in the SwiftUI data flow. Uh, and the view components are really small, uh, very clean, small, uh, readable on MP of uh, any business logic. And so you can focus on your UI code and have all your business logic model uh, bugs <laughs> in your register where you have all your mutation and everything. So this is what you can test. Uh, and then you can also test your view and inject some props, for example, uh, apart from uh, from uh, this, business, this business logic. So thank you for listening. And uh, well, thank you. <laughs>